All right, welcome back. Episode 145 of Chaotic Me Intolerant. Um, we have a special guest today. I wonder if I can get him out from under my desk here. Come here. Come here. Get over here. Come here. No, no, no. Oh, my goodness. He's not going to. I don't know if he's going to want to do this. Come here. Right here. This is Butter. Where is he at? This is Butter. Say hi, Butter. Hey, buddy. He's just under a year old. This is his first podcast. He's watched me do a lot of homework, but uh, or a lot of work on the on the show, but he's never actually been on. So I hope he doesn't bark too much. He's hopefully gonna leave me alone. But he's he's I think he's under a year old, so he might might make a few audio appearances. I think that's cool. He's a good boy. This I think this is the first dog we've had on the show. We've had a cat on the show, a couple cats on the show before. One showed his asshole last week, so. <laughs> It happens. <laughs> but I don't think Butter's going to do that. Um, but today is baseball. We are officially back. Baseball is back. And uh, the Boston Red Sox have already figured out a way to end their season before it's even started. Um, Lucas Giolito is done for the year. Ta- partially torn UCL, and they're shutting him down. Um, Jordan Montgomery remains unsigned, although a lot of teams don't want to sign him right now. So I have a strong feeling it's Scott Boris. And include that also includes JD Martinez, Blake Snell, and I think one other Boris client remains unsigned. Snell, Martinez, Montgomery, Chapman already signed, so he's off the board. He's off the hook. Yeah. Yeah. But just, I, I'm not really sure because, like, it feels like the Scott Boris kind of reign could be coming to an end shortly. I kind of hope um, because those contracts are just historically bad I, one of our guys wrote a story on it and like four of the top five worst contracts that are currently active are scott boris clients like they just historically they underperform yeah i mean was he was was boris the agent for dallas keichel and kimbrell i don't know about kimbrell but a few years ago it was i think 2019 where those guys went into like june and they were still unsigned Let's see. Uh, yeah, kind of I would assume he was. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't yeah, say anything. That. And then so he went oh, well yes. in that season um, unsigned. And it was just incredible. I mean, these teams are like, hey, here's, you know, one player. We don't need to break the bank for this guy. And Keichel, he hasn't been the same since. I mean, is he still – he's sort of hanging around. I think he was with Minnesota last year, the year before. but. I don't know that. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's that the rain is coming to an end, but like uh, teams are just not playing hardball with Boris anymore. You know, we're, we're yeah. March 6th and the reigning Cy Young award winner does not have a team. I mean, Keiko, like Keiko, I brought that up. He was, he had won a Cy Young in 2015, maybe, or was it 17? I don't remember, but it, he wasn't coming off a Cy Young year. I mean, Snell is coming off his second Cy Young. He's won one in both leagues. But teams just aren't biting. They just don't buy it, and they just don't want to deal with Boris. And they don't want to sign him for seven years in his late thirties or whatever. It's um, it's a bad look. It is. Yeah. I'm um, just trying to find when he won the Cy Young. Keiko, when Keiko won the Cy Young. Um, can't find. It's not showing me on Baseball Reference. Hold on. Um, anyways, but yeah, it was 2015, uh, he was 2015 when they, yeah, there was, the okay. first year where they really broke onto the scene as, as yeah, yeah, the, the most recent story on Dallas Keuchel was from December 19th, 2023. And it has to do with a 200 or $2.1 million mansion with a wet bar. Um, wow. so that clearly shows kind of where he's at in baseball right now. Um, he was, he pitched for the twins last year. So mm-hmm. I just, that when, when has those massive, one of those massive contracts ever worked out? Like, I can't really imagine a time when those players lived up like Albert Pujols. I remember he signed that what $500 million, $400 million contract with the angels. And he had like a couple good years. And then it was like, okay, he's old now. Like he's not Pujols on the Cardinals anymore. Right. Right. I can only hope that happens to Otani, but um, it's doubtful. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's also guys that are older. I mean, these are guys that are – Montgomery is the one that's a little surprising. He's 
still, I think, in the prime, but he's never been a like a an ace. He's not an ace. Yeah. Very good. He's a he's a two he's a he's a two on a okay team, a three on a pretty good team. Right. I mean Montgomery's thirty one, so I'm not talking about a kid here either. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean he he's actually what? He's actually the same age as Snell. Just feels like Snell's been around longer because he's been mm-hmm. relevant. Well, and we, we we can't forget Snell getting pulled in the World Series. I mean that that's the, still the most outrageous thing ever. I don't know how how like Kevin Cash still has a job. Right. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he keeps winning Manager of the Year, but never winning the postseason. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's. I want to go into each team. We'll spend probably a minute or two just talking about each team. We're gonna start in the Grapefruit League because I'm just looking at the standings. The Baltimore Orioles, brand new owner. Um, Made another big free agent signing, um, acquiring. Oh my goodness, what's the pitcher's name? I saw him pitch at spring training. Um, We're talking Corbin Burns, so not a Cor- Corbin Burns. Yep, made a big, big splash with that. I love Snell to go to Baltimore first. Right? If we're talking about those free agents, yeah, I think if it if it becomes a a, a thing where he'll take a short term deal, I mean that's been floated mm-hmm. as a possibility. New ownership, you know, the, the the willingness to spend. Corbin Burns, who they traded for, is. On he's a he's in a walk here, so yeah. this is in in essence he's a rental at this point. Mm-hmm. And so if you get Snell on a short term deal, you're you've suddenly gone from this building this thing from the ground up to like win now. Like this twenty we're here, yeah, year, you know, all in year. And um, I think I think the Orioles do need another starter right now. I I don't think Grayson Rodriguez is is ready. He's he's not. He hasn't had a full year in the big leagues yet. You know, he was sent back to the minors at one point last year. Kramer's inconsistent. I think there's too much uncertainty around Wells, um, around Irvin. I mean, I think they have their ace, but Bradish is Bradish is a big question mark because he's he's had you know uh, UCL issues. We'll see what that leads to. Uh, I would love to see them get another free agent. Right now, the the worst <laughs> signing they've made is Craig Kimbrell, who's been awful in spring training. I'm sure anyone could have told you that that was going to happen. They can't use him as the closer. I, I, I think he proved that with the Phillies. He proved that with the Red Sox in the World Series. He's not, you know, Craig Kimbrell of 2014 or whatever. I, I almost equated when he was with the Red Sox, he almost felt like a Jonathan Papelbon type because Papelbon would always load the bases and then he'd get out of it. He, that was his thing. But Kimbrell wouldn't get out of it sometimes. And he'd be like, motherfucker, like this guy just isn't. You're you can be Jonathan Pavelbon until you actually give up the runs. Right. Like you you can't give up those runs. Every every game in the postseason with Kimbrel was a heart attack. Like we almost had to go back to Boston for game five against New York in the ALDS that year. Just the only reason we didn't was because our third baseman, I think it was shoot, it wasn't Devers at the time. I can't remember who it was, but he made a he made a just made a great play on the on a like easy little nub nub ball, and Kimbrel, yeah, Kimbrel almost Brock. lost us that series. It was probably Brock Holt who was just he just took over that series against the Yankees. But yeah, let me see. Two eighteen. Is he yes. three? I mean, they won like sixteen to one. They they destroyed yeah. Severino, and they won the two games in the Bronx. And then they were playing New York, New York on the boombox after the game. <laughs> Let me see yeah. here. It was um, full camp, blah, blah, blah. Where is this? Oh, they they had Bucky Dent throw out the ceremonial first pitch in game four of that series. <laughs> That's evil. <laughs> That's evil. Oh, my goodness. Uh, where's Craig Kimbrell, Aaron Judge? Blah, 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 blah. It wasn't a – I know it wasn't a big name. It wasn't a big name guy. Honestly, it was like Eddie Rosario. Not Eddie Rosario. Let me see here. Anyways, we can go to Boston here. Um, they're eight and four in the Grapefruit League, so that's the probably the only time we're going to be near the top of the standings and anything. Although the last when they won the Grapefruit League in 2018, they won the World Series. So ipso facto, we're going on a run. No, um, this Red Sox team is getting calls. The fans are calling for John Henry to sell the team. I mean, this is. I would say this is. As dysfunctional, if not worse, than in uh, 2011, 2012, like the end of 2011, and then that entire 2012 season with Bobby Valentine, there was just no future there. It felt like there was no future, and then obviously they went in 2013, but 2014 and 2015, 
they were bad, but there was a future. Like there was, okay, we have some young guys coming up. Mookie Betts was coming up through the system. Like there was a real feeling of change. And 2011, end of 2011, you blow that huge lead uh, in, in September. I'll never forget it. Never forget the game against Baltimore. Um, Carl Crawford throwing, <laughs> try, trying to gun him down at home. Um, and then uh, 2012 was just, anytime I see that 100 gear patch, on a jersey, I get flashbacks. Just horrible flashbacks, because that was the 100th year of Fenway Park. Yeah, uh, Eduardo Nunez, by the way, that was who made it. Nunez, yes. Just Never forget. Because he had a big game in, was it game one or game two of the World Series? He had a big homer against the Dodgers. The, uh, and, and he was throwing his body around, like, all game, that, uh, the 16-inning game. It, it felt like he was hurt on every play. Yeah, he had gotten hurt. Uh, the year before in the ALDS. Uh, but the Red Sox, yeah, I mean, it's so weird to see them in this position of not spending, that being called out by former players. Devers, and, current players calling them out. And current players. Yeah, Giolito, I, that guy's ruined. I don't know. I don't know what, I mean, the Angels, he went there. He was in Cleveland last year. I mean, the fact that he bounced around to three teams, I, you know, I'm reading message boards. That it doesn't seem like people are too concerned that he's hurt. I mean, not... As the person, you know, you, you feel for him, obviously, yeah. and all that. But I'm talking about as the player, mm-hmm. um, they need to, they need another starter. That's just scratching the surface, too. I mean, I mm-hmm. think they got, you know, the two ex-Dodgers they have in the bullpen are really good. Chris Martin and, Ken, well, Henley Jansen, I mean, he has his moments, right? He can be good. Jansen had a good year last year. What a good he had, year. A, he had a pretty good year. He gets a bad rap for his postseason mix, misgivings, including against the Red Sox. He blew the save in that 18-inning game. But um, I, I like Chris Martin. I mean, he had a phenomenal year. As always, the Dodgers take these guys and they fix them, and then they become incredible. But I don't know. I don't know. Do you see Boston finishing anywhere outside of anything above fourth this year in the AL East? I mean, barring well, a big splurge here in free agency? Part of my psyche about the Red Sox is always forever ruined. Because 2013, they were the, the beer, you know, whatever the hell they call them. My memory about 20, 2013 being 11 years ago is crazy to me. First yeah. off, like that is insane. And I just can't remember a lot of this stuff now. Like I remember the players, but um, the beard, the bearded, whatever, the basically the idiots part two, um, they weren't expected to do anything. I mean, that was in, I mean, Johnny Gomes and Mike Napoli were, were some of the faces of that team. And then in 2021, they weren't expected to do anything. And then they go on a run to the ALCS to beat the number one seed at Tampa Bay Rays at the time um, and the ALDS. And I mean, they were two wins away. I mean, they were, they were a called third strike away really from the world series that, that game in Boston that um, Evaldi had a called third strike that wasn't, it just didn't get called. Stop licking me, dude. Um, I, my psyche's ruined. It's always going to be ruined. No matter what, 50 years from now, if the Red Sox haven't been to the playoffs in 50 years, I'm still going to say, well, there's always 21. There's always 2013, right? Um, I could, I mean, it just feels like everything's already gone wrong now. You know, you, you sh- Jordan Montgomery wants to come to Boston. There's reports about him wanting to pitch at Fenway and be in a Red Sox uniform. I guarantee he would sign with the Yankees. The Yankees would probably pay him more than we would. But he's sure. holding out because he wants to play in Boston. And now you lose Giolito, who is one of your – starters i mean we, we traded away chris sale but Julito is one of those starters we we're really looking forward to although he was on that typical red Sox two-year deal with the opt-out or some sort of out at the end of the first year it's just barring everything else going right i i, I could see them maybe finishing third i i could see maybe like a wild card push in july and they end up getting burned i think our our rotation is somewhat underrated um the Red Sox like can't develop pitching. That's part of the problem. But if you can get Tanner Houck and you can get um, Nick Pavetta to really stay healthy all year, I think they can find some footing. But again, Tanner Houck is the right-handed Chris Sale. He just looks like he is built for Tommy John. Like that's just his build. And those guys, they can literally place the ball in the glove from the mound. But they are both extremely injury prone. So maybe third place, I would say. Um, I don't really believe a lot in the Yankees. Baltimore, I think, is going to win the division. Toronto is kind of – 
I feel like every year Toronto gets hyped up. We do. They're they're almost the Chargers to me. The Dolphins, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, Dolphins, Chargers, where they get hyped up, hyped up, hyped up, and then they kind of underperform. And Tampa last year felt like the year it it had to be done last year. But I feel like Tampa's kind of like that every year, where it's like, oh, they're not going to be that good, and then they go out and play really good baseball all year. So they could find their way in the third. I would say maybe sneak into a wild card spot if everything goes right, but I have a feeling they'll be in the wild card race and they won't sell at the deadline and then they'll get burned and they'll fall apart. Kind of like they did last year. They were somewhat in that wild card race in July. Um, yeah. My story on the 2013 Red Sox, that was the first time I ever put a big futures bet down and I won. I had a premonition about the Sox that year. And then, well, unfortunately, obviously, if you had the marathon bombings and that only yeah. solidified my faith that they were going to rally around it because they'd gotten off to a really good start that year, but nobody was buying into it. Everybody still was mm-hmm. had the memories of and I got like 30 to one odds. And I was like, well, this is cool. I've never done this before. I never did like, a, you know, I always thought of betting. It's like you got a game, you put a bet in who's going to win the game. Right. And then I was like, yeah. that kind of got me into this whole futures bet. And then I got really full of myself and I've kind of like broken even over the years on these other bets. Like I had some that came in some that didn't but that was like my claim to fame where i was like they're just i don't know why they're going to win the world series this year and then they had that rallying cry poppy gave that speech right when they oh. came back nava hit that home run daniel i mean yeah when you think about like the magic of winning a championship with a team that's not supposed to it's because guys have one-off career years that they will never replicate and nava and mm-hmm. will middlebrooks and johnny gomes and mike napoli and Clay Buckholtz was like nine and zero at one point that year. He, yeah, he got hurt. He yeah, was going to win the Cy Young. Like he was right. almost a lock to win the Cy Young, and then he got hurt. And he came back, and he wasn't quite what he was, but he still was pretty damn good. And Koji and his high fives. I mean, had a that was unhittable. That splitter, yeah, kind of what I feel like Yamamoto might be this year, but with ten extra miles an hour. But I think yeah. the Red Sox will be. I think they got a shot because, like you said, the rest of the division. Tampa, at some point, Tampa's got to be scarred by all its playoff failures. It's got to yeah. know that it just all it's been doing is overachieving in the rate because they don't spend. And the model's great. It's cute. It's all money ball. But in, until somebody, until a team wins a championship, actually wins the World Series with that, not gets there, not gets close, game seven, game six, until they win it, there's just no evidence that you'll ever be – like, I don't know. I mean, people say, well, in baseball, you can't buy your teams. That's true. But – the teams that win, they still spend. The Rangers yeah. spent, you know, the Astros, they do spend. The Braves spent, you know, just going back over. Even the- if it is on the homegrown talent, they spend on their homegrown talent. They, they lock them down. Talent, but they also add, when they get there, they add a couple of key pieces. I mean, the Nats, that was a thing. Like, when they won it, they felt like an underdog because that was the year they went in as a as an underdog, basically. But they were loaded with talent, and they were spending a lot on Scherzer, and they'd given – Strasburg a pretty big deal which was expiring and it, so it's not like in Corbin they had given Corbin a big deal just before that season so you have to spend and so the Rays the Jays I admire the Jays for trying to get Otani even though it felt like that was just all smoke and mirrors it was never going to happen I think Boston can always surprise I don't think I think the Orioles the way I size up the AL East is the Orioles have never have not dealt with the weight of expectations this will be the first year the Orioles are expected <laughs> to be good. And sometimes teams struggle with that the first time they have to do. Last year, the Orioles, well, if they get over 500, it's a big thing. If they get in the playoffs, it's a big day. And they go win 101 games. Mm-hmm. I think the AL East is more open than people think. Yeah. Um, when, Baltimore, when did Baltimore win their last one? Was that 2015? Well, prior to last year, their last division title was 2014. They had 2014, yeah. 2016. Um, and then there's there's the Yankees, which, I mean, they're so hyped up. They're the favorite of the AL, and this is a team that won 82 games last year. But again, it's if you know if you tell the average fan, Garrett Cole, Giancarlo Stanton, Aaron Judge, now Juan Soto, maybe Snell gets in that mix, maybe Montgomery, um, Rizzo, Torres, LeMay. I mean, the names, the the star. That, there's no question on star power alone. They they mm-hmm. would be the best team, but it doesn't work like that. And the Yankees have not been to a World Series in a decade and a half. Yeah, the Red Sox have won two in that time. Yeah, and the, so. Yan- the, the, the Yankees in that time have been to the ALCS five times and lost all 
five times. Yeah. Um, speaking of Garrett Cole, he did just uh, was crying that he gave up a home run in spring training and Vogelback, quote, took his time on the home run trial. I'm not sure if he's aware that Danny Burgers doesn't have any other speed. That's mm-hmm. that is his like top speed. He's <laughs> he's just he's just running like that's that's him. And he's just complaining about him taking his time. Is he he's he's the biggest crybaby in the league right now. I mean, at least. Right. Because he's always complaining about something. Yeah. By the way, Rodon gave up three runs and in three innings today. But I think Garrett Cole is he has that very prima donna style. He's a Boris guy, of course. I mean, yeah. that whole thing about where he wouldn't talk after the World Series because he's was no longer employed by the Astros following the Boris instructions. He's he's very he acts very entitled. I mean, remember this is a guy that was the top pick in the draft, all the talent in the world, no question. Yeah, but yeah, that whole thing with um, with there was a whole thing with him and Alec Manoa, right? Do they, they, they got I think so. Game. Yeah, they got in a, into a tiff, I guess. But I mean, him. The the thing that is awesome about him is he just can't perform against the Red Sox. Like, I think no matter what, no matter what, no matter what's going on with these teams, like when the Red Sox and Yankees get together, it's just something. There's just something about it. I mean, you can't. I don't even think you can say it about like the Patriots and their and their old rivalries now. Like. Which obviously we can we can talk more football next week, but Russ to the Patriots is my favorite, my favorite pick. Oh my god, I love that because he's going to play for a league minimum deal. But um, just I just I just always get giddy thinking about Red Sox games. Just something about it. The AL when when the, he got shelled in the uh, wild card game in twenty one, that was awesome. Just fantastic. I mean, and the city was rocking. So that show is like. Like baseball isn't dead in Boston, which is really frustrating that they they won't just put in a little bit more because they know like fans are going to show up. Like fans are always going to show up to Fenway. They're always going to show up to the Red Sox. But if they build a team and especially they're building all these restaurants out around Fenway, they're making it a whole thing now, which is what a lot of teams are doing. um, They would be making even more money. I just, they know people will spend, but they're not going to spend as much. Like I just, don't get it. I really don't. And you have guys sitting out there. You have you have so much opportunity to to make money with the Red Sox, and I just I can't can't understand it. I really don't. They're they're too focused on the Penguins, the Fenway Sports Group. Like they, LeBron. Actually, this is I'm I'm put I'm placing the blame on LeBron. This is LeBron's fault because he is he is a minority owner in Fenway Sports Group now. Um, it's all LeBron's fault. He hates Boston, and he. That's the only reason he joined. He just wanted to destroy the Red Sox and the city of Boston. So moving on to uh, the next division, I guess. Uh, let's go. Let's talk Astros. So what? what is that? I don't even know what. I mean, they, you lose to the Rangers. You lose the Battle of Texas in the ALCS. Jose Altuve seems to be a little reborn to me. That's that's what's coming out of camp a little bit, I guess. Uh, yeah, the, the Astros, I mean, they're lack, they're always – well, I don't know about always, but this year they're lackluster in spring training, and they always seem to be lackluster in April and May. They they truly understand pacing themselves in a season, and there's no way you win seven straight division titles, win seven straight American League division series without having that that calm and knowing that the yeah. talent is there. The um, The Rangers, though, could be really good this year it, it, because it's like the opposite of what's happening to the Orioles where – all of a sudden, the Orioles have all these expectations because they won 100 games. The Rangers won the World Series. Nobody's talking about them. Is anybody yeah. talking about the Rangers? It's still – it's all about the Dodgers in the National League anyway and all their giant additions. And the, the talk is about Scherzer being hurt. Montgomery maybe is gone um, from Texas. You know, And they bullpen problems. Bruce Bochy's teams don't win the year after they win the World Series, right? That's always – they always yeah. miss the playoffs the year after. So – the, it's easy to just forget. I mean, because Texas, I don't know. They just, they're not a dynastic team that they, they hadn't yeah. been to the postseason since 2016, but there's a lot of reasons to think. I mean, God, I love, you thought, so they had Simeon and Seager and everyone talks about Simeon and Seager. They spent half a billion dollars on those guys. They were great. Obviously Seager was incredible in the postseason. Then they got a new duo. They got Evan Carter and Wyatt Langford. And I mean, 
those two guys and Carter's really looking good in spring training. He's the only guy to get a hit off Yamamoto, but those two kids, I mean, imagine if they play up to their potential and then you couple yeah. them with Simeon and Seager, you already have Josh Young and Jonah Heim and, uh, you know, it's a pretty deep lineup. It's the pitching that's questionable about Texas, but then there's Houston and it's like Verlander could be on the shelf at the beginning of the year. They have a new manager. Yeah, oh, they're old. Brantley retired. It's like, do we have any doubt the Astros are going to be right there? As much as we are tired of it, do we have any yeah. doubt that they're and and they're yeah. probably going to do it by winning ninety games, ninety five games. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be. They're not going to. I mean, they've had a couple of those great seasons. I mean, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen, they were over a hundred wins, and then twenty twenty two, they won one hundred and six. But like last year. They they won the division on the final day. Twenty twenty one, I think they won ninety five games. Twenty twenty, joke season, but they had a losing record and still ended up in the ALCS. They literally were two games under. Yeah. So I think they're going to be in it. I was disappointed that Seattle didn't make any big moves. I mean, we didn't hear about them going after Ichiro. They need another bat. I I think they should go Ichiro. After Did I say Ichiro? I meant Otani. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they should have gone after Ichiro too. It was also a mistake. Um, yes. Um, but yeah, I, I would, I, we didn't hear about them going after Otani really. I mean, that was, a, they were linked as a possible suitor yeah. and, you know, obviously having had Ichiro that might've set the stage. I mean, Seattle's got some good young talent. They, they won, what they win? 88 games, 89 games. They just missed the postseason last year and they were in it. They beat Texas that final game of the season last year. They won that series, but they, they lost the series before to the Astros. Then there's just the Angels are so sad. I don't even want to talk about the Angels. I mean, they're just what are they going to do? I mean, they, they or or the or the or the Athletics the too. A's. I mean, just oh yeah, how many games are the A's going to lose? And are they moving? Their the their city that they're moving to doesn't even want. They're like, no, like this is not a good idea. Don't come here. Yeah. Um, Seattle maybe without one of its top bullpen pieces for the year now. Matt Brash, he may be done for the year. That that could be a big loss. I. I, I just see Seattle as right in that same vein as the Blue Jays. Like, they're good. Mm-hmm. They might push to win 90 games. They just don't have enough to win a championship at this point. Yeah. They don't. So, to me, yeah. the winner of that division is going to be from the state of Texas. And we'll just see which which team it'll be. And Texas has not won that division since 2016, even though they won the World Series last year. Mm-hmm. And um, it says Scherzer and uh, DeGrom are aiming midsummer returns, which that's, I mean, that's like getting a free agent, like two, two big name free agents, basically. Yeah. I mean, so if they can, know. if they just keep their heads afloat, I, I think that's big. Just stay afloat until they get back, get there. And then hopefully DeGrom can stay healthy to pitch half a season at this point, because good Lord, like the guy just can't, he cannot stay healthy. And Scherzer, he's getting up there in age, so um, we really don't know about his health. I, I thought, and it's interesting, Houston ended up with Josh Hader, and they did not need bullpen help. Texas needed a lot of bullpen yeah. help. And they went out and got a couple of uh, dependable veterans. But the question is, David Roberts and Kirby Yates, at this point in their careers, can those guys step in as closers? Can those guys stay healthy for a whole year? That remains to be seen. They, they were able to patch it together in the postseason. They really rode three guys hard to the end. Um, well, really – Chapman, who's gone, LeClerc and Josh Spores. Will Smith's mm-hmm. gone, which, by the way, means the Royals will win the World Series because Will Smith has been on – he's won the last three World Series with three different teams. And then Will Smith won a World Series. The Dodgers' Will Smith won a World Series in 2020. So the last four World Series winning teams have had a guy named Will Smith on their roster, just an FYI. Uh, but I don't see – I don't know if Texas bullpen – I mean – Bochi knows how to manage a bullpen, and he certainly knows how to in the postseason. But that bullpen almost cost them a ticket to the postseason last yeah. year. So that's something to keep in mind. Mm-hmm. They would have and won then to the worst, What's yeah, that? the worst worst division in both leagues, um, yeah. the American Central. League Central. Yeah, always, yeah. always, they're always the problem. Uh, I don't even want to mention the Chicago White Sox. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Who, who's even worth mentioning here? Maybe Cleveland, like so possibly. The, uh, yeah, the Central divisions have not sent a team to the World Series since it sent both teams. Both Central sent a team in 2016. Yeah. Cubs Indians, which was mm-hmm. I watched a special on that a couple weeks ago. It was really cool. 
it was all about game seven and some of the crazy things he forgot about that game. And they had Francona and Madden on, uh, and it was like Bob Costas and Tom Verducci. And anyway, um, the centrals are terrible. Yeah, Rajay Davis still doesn't, still doesn't get the love for that homer. Oh, like that, that was the, that was epic. He also had a, an RBI single in the bottom of the 10th. People forget they got them within a run. And if they can hit a gapper there, they tie that game and they're still playing to this day. Uh, I would say that yeah. the central, the, the, I just have a problem with baseball and divisions. Like the twins are getting in every year and it's like, Oh, they're the three seed, but they're like the eighth best team when they win the division. It's just cause mm-hmm. baseball has to break the teams up by geography and they don't have to, but they choose to because they want to, you know, whatever balance out the markets. I guess I get that. But when you're talking about the sanctity of really making sure the best teams are playing in the postseason, the best teams are getting home field. The central is always the, like the, the, but the, the turd in the punch bowl or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, of the, of the American league central, could you see any team like, surprising i mean i i'm a little bit bullish on the tigers this year i think they've got a lot of young talent i'm just not sure if it's quite ready to gel but if not now like when and there's there's a lot to like about detroit i think i think i think they're the only possible team to make the run i guess like it doesn't really feel like like minnesota they i would say what are their what are the odds right now um well they're the favorite Minnesota to win the division. Yeah, they're the favorite. They are, I mean, if you're the favorite, like obviously you're expected to win that, but I would think Detroit would be the best odds to go on some sort of run and maybe actually represent the AL Central positive. Um, yeah. yeah. Cleveland just bores me. Um, they do. They do. They, boy, could they use a big bat. To me, they're always, a, yeah. they're always a good pitching team. Cleveland, they always have the mm-hmm. pitching, although Trevor Stefan, I mean, that's – to keep an eye. He might be out for a little while. He's been one of their best relievers the last couple of years. They've got some exciting young arms, and they still have Shane Bieber, Kristen McKenzie. I Cleveland, like, but to me, the problem is Cleveland is just another Minnesota. Like Detroit, if, if you're looking for a team that could maybe actually break through and then elevate closer to the other teams with the talent on the roster in the pipeline, Detroit stands out more. But if you look at the odds, the Twins are basically even money to win. I'm just looking at DraftKings. Twins are even money to win that division. And then you got the, yeah. you know, they're minus 115. Tigers and Guardians, plus 350. The Royals, you know, the Royals actually spent a little money. They picked up a few starters this year. They're trying to beef up their rotation. I mean, I can't see them. I, can't, I mean, again, though, with Bobby Witt and Sal Perez, they got Michael Waka. They have Cole Reagans, who was great. They picked up Seth Lugo. As I mentioned, they have Will Smith, so their World Series odds are very much in play. Um, <laughs> MJ Melendez. They, I think the Royals, I don't know. I mean, like, I don't – it wouldn't shock me if the Royals hovered around 500 this year. Would I don't think they can really they're, – they're ready to make a run. But in that division, yeah. like – you don't even have to be good. You can squeak in. And that's what they did, right, in 2014. They hadn't made the postseason in 29 years. They squeaked in as the wild card and then snap your fingers there in game seven of the World Series. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I guess before we go to the National League, who would benefit in the American League from Trevor Bauer the most? Ooh. I think Because he's, a, he's definitely a big piece that, I mean, he's just out there. And there's so many players that are like they're talking positively about him. They're like they're endorsing him. They're saying, "Yeah, we would." I mean, Trevor Bauer would be great to have back in baseball because he was exonerated from those charges, so he is not guilty. I think it would be a small market team. I don't think any big market team needs that headache of having him. But I actually think, since we're talking about the AL Central, I think one of those teams—a Minnesota, a Detroit, a Kansas City, or Cleveland. That I think he'd fit in great there because, you know, he, he can fly a little more under the radar. Is he remorseful? Has he learned anything? Will teammates embrace him? Who knows? I think some he- teammates are against him. They say he's annoying to deal with. And then there's others that are like, he's a great clubhouse guy. We don't obviously we don't know, you know, what what he really is, but um he seems like there's like a pretty positive understanding i'm not 100 percent sure i guess i i personally don't like him 
I just don't like like ball players and especially like YouTubers like that. Um, just the way he makes content, but that has nothing to do with his actual pitching because as a pitcher, I mean, you look at his stats in Japan and pretty good stats this past year. Like he's, I remember they said, Oh, he got sent down to the minors and he was struggling a little bit, but overall he really leveled out and he's seen, hopefully he can return to what he was. Yeah. I mean, I think younger guys would probably be more willing to play with him. I think it might be veteran guys who, are concerned and, you know, preconceived notions and things like that. I think, so I think a young team would probably benefit from having him and he could actually have a chance to step in and, and, you know, I think on a, on a team with a lot of stars, it's easy to get caught up with in your personality. But I think if he goes to like a team like the Royals, he knows he probably has to set a good example, you know, as yeah. best he can, you know, moving forward, turn over a new leaf. But man, I think he'd still be a good pitcher. Just, we're just talking about Trevor Bauer, the pitcher. From what I've seen and you know, what I heard he did in Japan and what he was doing with the Dodgers before all that shit at the fan, um, he still got it. He still got a yeah. lot in the tank. Uh, maybe not a lot, but he still got something and would be a real bar. Didn't he say he'd pitch for the league minimum too? Was that him? Yeah, he said he would go for the minimum. Yeah. yeah. He said he would go for the minimum. He would. Yeah, I, w- I would understand older guys not wanting to be around him. Just they don't want to be around the cameras. They don't want the social media stuff, but a lot of those young guys really, they would probably benefit. I mean, I'm sure like building up some guy's social presence is good for team morale, you know, and helps you make a little bit more money and and sponsorship deals and stuff. Um, Maybe, I mean, a one big market team I could see doing it just because he's cheap are the Red Sox. Like they need a pitcher, you know, giolito has gone. They've not, they don't want to spend money. They could get him on a league minimum deal. And I think Bauer has come out and he's been pretty positive about wanting to pitch at Fenway. Yeah. Yeah. That would be, yeah, I can definitely see that, right. I mean, it would, it would settle the cheapness part of the Red Sox. So. Yeah. All right. To so the national league. Uh, I want, I want to talk about the Mets because one of my favorite internet personalities is Frank, the tank, massive Mets fan as season tickets constantly gets into arguments with fans because he wants the Mets to win, and they just care about going to watch the games. And they had a historic collapse two years ago. Collapse, choke, I don't know what you want to call it. There was a big debate about that. And then last year, it was, I mean, it was it was all over. It was literally, felt like the Mets were going to win the World Series in June of 2022. And then by literally in one year, it was like, okay, they're done. Like, it's just the Mets. Well, you can thank the Mets for the AL West having the epic battle it had because Verlander and Scherzer became <laughs> Texans. I don't know. I don't know how you fix the Mets. I mean, do they, they clearly don't seem keen on going back into a rebuild, but yet they're kind yeah. of forced into it because I think they mm-hmm. made a legit push for Yamamoto. I don't have any doubt. I, I know that Otani, there was no way he was going to the East coast, but. Um, well, and Seng, uh, what's his name? Um, Seng, Seng, Senga. Yeah. yeah. He's, I, I I don't know how long he was out. It's going to be an extended period of time, though. Mets fans probably get PTSD every time there's a you know an injury pitcher. You know, Degrom. I mean, think about 2015, almost a decade ago now. Scary to think, but Harvey Degrom, Wheeler of all those guys is is the one that's been the healthiest and most consistent. Degrom has had the biggest upside. Syndergaard has flamed out. Harvey, sad story. Just never. He just really fell yeah. off fast. So. I don't know what the Mets are going to do. I mean, they, they are in a, in a rebuild and then I don't see them competing to win that division. I don't know what, because if it was maybe just one team and it was a house of cards, but the Braves are a sturdy outfit and they are really, really good. And it'd be, it's hard to imagine anyone, even the Phillies winning that division. I wouldn't count the Phillies yeah. out of it, but I see the Braves, you know, way up here. You've got the Phillies who may be close, but not there yet. And then the Mets and the Marlins are kind of in the same vicinity i mean the marlins made the postseason last year it was a big deal for them and but they didn't i don't know it didn't seem like they they're doing much to capitalize on their momentum from last year didn't really make any big moves um and then the nats i mean they're they're in a rebuild but the nats look they won what 70 games last year i thought dave martinez did a great job underratedly great job last year um mm-hmm. they got a young core they're still a few years away but they're not going to be a pushover at the very least. I don't think you'll, you'll see a team that's just a complete pushover either. So it's mm-hmm. a pretty, it's a pretty talented division 
all things considered. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the Braves, they, I mean, the, I think one of the big ones, underrated ones, was Chris Sale. And that's yeah. underrated because his, his injury history, And but if they make a deep run, I feel like he could definitely have a big impact. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, a healthy strider, you know, favorite for Cy Young, Max Freed in the, in that discussion and Chris Sale really. Cause that, cause I, I guess Charlie Morton's coming back. He's, he's still in the mix for another year. And then you got these Jesus, these how old is guys, he? Bryce Elder and Dodd. I, yeah, I think Charlie Morton's on the brat. I'm not missing anything. Am I didn't fall off the 40? Yeah, he, he's, he's no, he's with the Braves. So the pitching is there. I mean, it's been weird to see the Braves have, they win the World Series in 21 with 88 wins. And then the last two years, they have incredible regular seasons and lose to the Phillies in the first round. And so it's it's just... I mean, the, the Braves last year were like one of the best offensive teams of all time. Yeah. So they were like borderline there and they fizzle out. <laughs> yeah. Well, one short series against good pitching just completely negates a great lineup. But keep an eye on Acuna's knee and the meniscus problem. The Braves hope that doesn't affect his play this year but you had him at the top and albies and riley and olsen and michael harris and i mean they're loaded they're, they're, they're loaded with, there's no reason the braves even with the dodgers getting otani and yamamoto i still think that braves can give them a run for their money in the nl but a lot of it's just going to come down to pitching how healthy are they and the braves bullpen it's not been great the last few years it's not it's not i don't know that you know when they won it in 21 they really got you know of course, Will Smith was in the mix. And then you had Matzik and you had A.J. Minter all had great postseasons. But the Braves' bullpen the last two years, is in, I don't know. So that could be a, an area where they struggle too. But, yeah, I, I anticipate them winning the division barring a slew of injuries. But don't sleep on the Phillies because, hey, the Phillies have been to the NLCS two years in a row, went to the World Series. And don't sleep on the Phillies maybe getting Snell or Montgomery on a short-term deal. They got the, you got your guy, Dave Dombrowski. Yeah, he's going to sell the farm like that. That's if we know one thing about Dave Dombrowski is he will pillage your entire village. Like he'll he'll come in, destroy everything, but he's gonna bring you a title. He'll be there basically until they win a title, and then he's off somewhere else. Uh, right. I was watching Moneyball the other day, and there's always that scene where uh, Brad Pitt, you know, he goes, "Oh, oh, give me David Dombrowski on the phone." I'm like, Jesus Christ, this guy's been doing it since since Moneyball. Like that's insane, and he just. I mean, if you win titles, I guess that's good, but ruin the team and look where the Red Sox are at after after his reign. But yeah. Um. All right. So the Central, the NL Central, Cub. The Cubbies are the team that I really like out of the NL Central right now. They, uh, you know, resigning Cody Bellinger was big. Um, Bellinger, Scott Boris client, um, just couldn't couldn't get the deal he wanted. I want to say he wanted like. Three hundred million dollars, and he got eighty. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, who, who knows? Like, poor guy. I don't know how he's gonna feed his family on like three years eighty. That's gonna be tough. You might. I know. To Good lord. Two hundred. Two hundred million dollars. Yeah. Um, I know we were ripping on the central. Certainly the AL central. The NL central. Look, the Pirates are just a. I I, I forgot what a I joke. Was. They're just a business. They're just a. They're just a break even, try to make a profit business, right? They're not. Serious mm -hmm. about winning. Although they did get a roll this Chapman, presumably, so they could flip him at the deadline for gorgeous uh, stadium. I'll give that to him. Stadium. Gorgeous, probably, probably my favorite National League stadium. That or San Francisco. Um, yeah, but the Pirates are the Pirates. The Brewers have been good, but they they're very Minnesota twinsy. I mean, and now and and trading Burns. Look, I mean, I like Joey Ortiz. I wasn't thrilled the Orioles got rid of him, but he was in a log jam. And DL Hall. He's got a great arm. The question is whether he could thrive as a starter or he's a bullpen guy. So I don't know that the Brewers even, I mean, in a, even in a walk year for Burns, it was smart of them to pick up a couple guys. But And they got Ch Ch Chorio, I don't know how you pronounce his name, that top prospect. So it be exciting to see him. But I think the three other three teams in the Central are all worth keeping an eye on. The Cubs, they were ba they were basically like a drop fly ball away from being a postseason team last year. Yeah. A sneaky drop the fly ball against the Braves, cost them a game. They end up missing the play, uh, playoffs by a game or two. The Reds were right in that same boat. The Reds have a lot of pitching, although now question about, um, oh, God, who was the guy that just was shut down? Was it Lodolo? Or, I think it was L Lodolo. Um, but they got, some, they got some hitters. Jonathan India 
very confidently predicting the Reds are going to make the playoffs this year. Of course, this was the guy that was almost traded. And then, and then the Ellie you know, De La Cruz. And they got Ellie, Ellie De La Cruz and Spencer Steer. They got some hitters, Encarnacion Strand. Um, so the Reds, the Cubs, and then there's the Cardinals, who you forget the Cardinals still have Arenado and Goldschmidt in their lineup. They went out, they get yeah. Sonny Gray, who now is starting the season on the IL with a hamstring injury. And um, they went out, they got Lance, well, Lance Lynn. I don't, <laughs> you saw him in the postseason last year. I don't think you're getting a whole lot. They got Kyle Gibson. I thought he did a nice job for the Orioles. He's not, he, he's a middle of the rotation guy, innings eater. Yeah. Um, I don't know that the Cardinals will necessarily compete for the division, but I think the Reds and the Cubs will have a nice little battle this year. I do. And I think the Cubs quietly picked up um, Imanaga. So they got themselves a uh, he's he's not Yamamoto, but he's a pitcher that had success in Japan. They're hoping Justin mm-hmm. Steele can build off of what he did last year. Yes, they lost Stroman, so they're going to have to replace that. They got Hector Neris. I like that pickup. He did. He's been great for the Astros for a few. He was good with the Phillies too, but you would never know it because Philly fans would probably just bring up every blown save he ever had. And uh, and then the lineup with you know Bellinger and Suzuki <laughs> and Swanson and their top prospect Pete Crow Armstrong there. Yeah, there, there's definitely, understandably, some excitement in the Windy City this year. I, I are they are the Cubs a World Series caliber team? Probably not on paper at the moment. But the beauty of baseball is you don't know what the trade deadline is going to bring. So, yeah, the, the NL Central will be a little is, better than the AL Central, to say the least. Is Paul Paul Skeens going to be distracted by Livy Dunn during this season? Because the, because they are. Do you know who Livy Dunn is? No, but you haven't heard of her. She's a LSU gymnast that went viral on TikTok because she's attractive, um, and she's dating Paul Skeens, obviously the big name pitcher. And when he was in Bradenton, she was at the game, and that was a whole big deal. I mean, it was it was whatever. It's just stupid shit. But um, actually, when he was in Bradenton, here's a little to to add on to your money making, or they treat it as a business. He was in Bradenton. They jacked the prices up for the minor league games. He pitched two innings, I think, maybe one inning. Um, he, I think he had two starts. They were promoting it all over the Bradenton Marauders Instagram, pushing it out, acting like this is like the biggest moment in their history. They doubled the price or tripled the price of tickets, and then he pitched one or two innings. And that was like a schedule. That was scheduled. That was like a design thing. Um, so just. Clearly, they care nothing about the fans or anything like that. I think the players should be easy for me to say, but marry a nice, normal, down-to-earth girl. I was like <laughs> Clayton Kershaw's wife. You know, I mean, Clayton Kershaw, of course, well, now famous, you know, nice-looking guy. But he, they got married yeah. when they really met in high school. And she's like a nice, you know, attractive, but normal, down-to-earth. She's not going to be on the cover of any magazines. And, and, of course, you know, say what you want about his postseason. But he's had a pretty nice career. So, I don't know. I'll, I I don't really believe a lot of celebrity relationships anyways. I don't think a lot of them are real. I mean, obviously there's a few that you just have, like, I think Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds are, they seem like they actually care about each other and love each other. But like a lot of these, like, honestly, you could even probably say that about the Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift, like, yeah, are they maybe, maybe putting on a little bit of an extra show. Like maybe they like hanging out, blah, 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 but like. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to get too far into it. <laughs> um, and then the NL West, the titan of the National League, the Los Angeles Dodgers, just how much more can they add and under, like, it can't, it, it almost like it has to happen, right? Like, you can't do all of this and not win a World Series. Because if you don't win this year, what else are you going to do? <laughs> well, the thing is, I mean, they're set up for a long time, which is a scary thought. I mean, it's it's been um, it's been tough to see. I mean, it's been tough to see this team not only emulate the Yankees, but maybe take it even a step further from what they've done. And do they win it this year? Do they win it next year? I mean, shoot, Otani's going to be in the rotation next year. Now, we're, we're yeah. assuming that he's going to be the same guy he's been. I don't see why he wouldn't, but you never know after two Tommy Johns. But yeah, I mean that's the thing is, see the part of me though thinks that the records in recent years the Dodgers have always overachieved in the regular season. You know they, they've always been good, but then you look you like oh are they 
are they really a 106 win team? Is it a product of the divisions? Is it a product of just guys can put up big numbers over long stretches of a season, but not necessarily in a shorter term? I don't know. Or the fact is the Dodgers go into all these seasons so loaded, they don't need to maybe adjust at the trade deadline, but then other teams do, and other teams catch up. The Atlanta caught up to them in 2021 when they made all those outfielder trades, right? And then last year, Arizona beefed up its team, and it showed in the postseason when they went head-to-head. And the Padres added, what, Hader and Soto in 2022. And it was like, well, yeah, the Dodgers beat up on them in the regular season, but now they got these guys and match up head-to-head. It's a little different. I mean, I – again, maybe it's just – you know, the opposite of rose colored lenses. It's hard for me to see them not winning the world series this year. Yeah. And, and, you know, my, my hope is that field someone in the field, as they say, they call it, will will step up, but yeah, it's insane what they've done. And I mean, they already were a 100 win team with tons of high priced talent and bets and Freeman. And it's, now you add Otani and Yamamoto and Glasnow and Teoscar Hernandez and, yeah, it's, you think about like the Rockies. What you look at the Rockies in the NL West? Are they going to go zero and thirteen against the Dodgers this year? I don't know. But I, I, it's like it's hard, especially for baseball because they play so many games. It's like hard to say. Yeah, they're not going to be able to beat them once because they, I mean, any given, literally any given day, you can have right. teams beat other teams. Like that's just that's just baseball. But that's the most likely scenario I think for this season. I mean, good lord, they are the the. I don't even think they should play in the same league. They really should like. They, we need we got to go to like the soccer style of like have the Premier League and and the Rockies are like in that local neighborhood team. Like that is just so bad. I mean, at least they play a mile high. Just a, another gorgeous stadium. I, I would love to visit that stadium. Um, the thing with the Dodgers too to keep in mind is they're. Like you can look at all the stars, but their prospects, oh, my God. And if you've seen any in spring training, they got guys like Kyle Hurd and Andy Pajes, Pages, Pajes, whatever, um, young guys that are coming through the system. Bobby Miller, who pitched last year. They've got, you know, a catch, a couple catching prospects, Diego Cartea and Dalton Rush. I mean, and then they have these guys like Ryan, all the ex-Red Sox that step up for them, Joe Kelly and Ryan Brazier. And last year, Shelby Miller had an incredible year. You know, it's it's the guys you don't think about that just dominate, have the best years of their career. So that's the scary proposition. It's not just like, okay, they got these stars and then there's nobody else. And then all these other guys that have stepped up over the years and came from nothing. Chris Taylor and Max Muncy. And last year, Hayward had a renaissance. I mean, it's crazy. I don't know. There's a cheat lab, cheat lab going on there too, which just makes it that much. Did I, I would assume Kershaw came back. But she's going to start the season on the IL. They, they already yeah. shut him down. But um, I would assume he came back because he's like, yeah, this has to be the year. Like, and and even like just it almost feels like the team of destiny when Kershaw comes back. Like he does add that that wrinkle because he's been there and he's failed like so many times. Like it's been you know, literally there's like tons and tons of stats. You look up just Clayton Kershaw playoffs and insult stats pop up immediately. Right. They have, I mean, they're still chasing their first full, full season World Series in 36 years. And yeah, they won in 2020, but it feels like they're really trying to prove that they can win a real World Series in normal. The further, the further we get away from that World Series, I think the more it invalidates it in, in my oh, eyes, especially so, yeah. because the Dodgers are just, I mean, they get swept by the Diamondbacks last year. Like they get, they got, they got their asses kicked in those games too. It wasn't, yeah. it, it didn't even feel like they had a chance in any of them. And it's like, you guys are really telling me that they would have done this over a 162-game season in 2020? Like, right. fuck no. they played, in total, how many, did they play, like, 80 games in total? Like, if you include total, the World total. Series? 78 games that year. They played. 78. 78 total. 60 regular, 18 post. And they beat, you know, I, I think I did the math. It was like, at the time, they beat four teams that had had one combined World Series win. They beat the Braves and they came back from three one in the bubble and won that series. They beat like a sub five hundred Brewers team. They swept the Padres, who were just getting back to relevance. Beat the Braves and then beat the Rays, who, as we know, don't win championships. So it's like 
Right. It all and and then the argument then was like, oh, but they played more games that postseason than anyone had. Well, well, no. Now the Rangers have done it. And Corey Seager yeah. was on both teams, and they Rangers won thirteen postseason and won eleven games on the road in front of crowds, having to travel and do all that. So you're right. It really invalidates it. The fact that the Dodgers have not been to the World Series the last three years also, I think, helps. So every year the Dodgers fail in the playoffs. It is a win for baseball, and it is a a win for anybody looking to use that evidence of how fluky and how illegitimate that 2020 World Series really was, in my opinion. And people so, say, well, what if your team had won that year? I wouldn't have wanted the Orioles. Are you kidding me? That's the World Series they're going to win? Oh, my God. No, I'm very thankful it was not a team that hadn't won that won that year because that would have been even worse. At least the Dodgers winning. It's like, okay, well, they were yeah. good. So it was just their time or whatever. And it's even worse for Tampa because they they still got there and they couldn't win. Like They, they couldn't even win that. Like, that's funnier to me. But I would, yeah, I wouldn't want to have to win that World Series and then have to defend it for the rest of my life. Like I, I like every time I say the Red Sox are ten time World Series champions if they won in twenty twenty, well, everyone's gonna be like, well, like ten and a quarter or nine and a quarter, really. Like, come on. And I wouldn't even be able to. How could I? If the Red Sox won that, I'd be like, yeah, that was a bullshit World Series. We didn't play hundred. We didn't play the full season that was designated at the start of the year. Like that was just what it was. Is and that summer camp bullshit that they did and just every, I mean, the whole thing was so horrible. And I don't want to invalidate the playoff run that the Dodgers had because I would say that was pretty real. I mean, obviously you didn't have, they didn't travel and they didn't have to play in front of crowds, but you still got to beat those really, really good teams that did make the playoffs. Like coming back against the Braves in the NLCS and then beating the Rays, that's, those are legit. But factor in, they played 60 regular season games. They played 102 yeah. less regular season games fatigue is a major factor and fatigue for the Dodgers has been a major factor since then and before that so I mean I would say they're more deserving of a World Series in 2017 we could call that the world their World Series yeah well in a sense I mean the Dodgers don't people forget because it was so long ago but 1981 was a bit of an asterisk that was a very unusual year where the strike broke up the years and the anybody that had had won the first half was automatically going to be in the postseason, but the Dodgers were only 27 and 26 in the second half. And I think it was something where they, they may not have made the playoffs, but they changed the format so that they, they were eligible and they did play. They actually played a division series that year. So the postseason was a little harder, but again, it was something where they benefited from the shorter season. And so that's two yeah. of the last three Dodger world series that people are like, they're legit, but people will always know that there was something different about those years, you know? Yeah, I think I think if there's – if it's not the normal, then it, you're going to have to put an asterisk on it. Yeah. Like, you just have to. It's, it's, it's the same thing. Like, the whole, there's a hole-in-one debate of, like, is it a hole-in-one if you're on a par three course? And it's like, if you say, oh, I got a hole-in-one, but it was on a par three course where you're playing all par threes instead of a full course, it's like, yeah, it, I got a hole in one, but it was on a par three course, so I had so many more chances. It's an accident. A home run in a, rec, a minor league stadium. The fences are shorter. It's still a home run, but it wouldn't be a homer in 30 out of 30 MLB ballparks. So um, yeah. as far as the rest of the NL West, just to touch on it real quick, I mean, the Giants have already been hit with an injury to their rotation. I'm I'm interested to see if they make a push for Snell or Montgomery. They lost Tristan Beck. Possibly. They have to sign a big name free agent at some point. Right, well, like it yeah, has they to happen. Have, you, they they need to get rid of this narrative that is growing every day with like people like Charles Barkley making those comments that people don't want to go there and play there, you know. And and Martinez turned down an offer apparently not because of the city, but because it was only for a year or was a certain didn't meet his price. And so okay, maybe that's true. But players, I mean, in in a lot of sports right now are not signing in San Francisco and. Giants are still, they play in a beautiful ballpark and they're still a pretty solid team. I think they're a couple players away from, from competing. Remember they won 107 games in 2021. It was an incredible season. So they're not that far removed from having had success. The Padres, their spending didn't work. Um, Delt Soto, Hater's gone. They didn't get anything for Hater. I mean, they got some guys from the Yankees for Soto. I don't see the, I don't know that I see anybody other than Arizona competing and then even that, you know, Arizona, I will say, I think Arizona 
getting Erod, having a full year of some of these yeah. guys. Um, Tommy Pham is still unsigned, by the way, and he was a big part of their postseason run. But I think Eduardo Rodriguez, Jock Peterson, A. Eugenio Suarez, they added a couple of power bats to their lineup. They added a pretty solid, potentially pretty solid pitcher to their rotation. I think they'll be in the mix. I think they could probably hang with the Dodgers for half a season in the West. But they know in the back of their minds, like, hey, we finished 16 games out of first last year and kicked the yeah. crap out of them in the playoffs. So we just need to get in. Tommy Pham uh, was at the Super Bowl for the first half and then left. F- funny really? little story. He left and he was like, I'd rather watch this game at home. This game sucks. And then we know what happened in the second half. The, the game got really, really good. So I bet he regrets that. Maybe maybe he's just sitting at home like regretting it. He's like, I don't want to sign a contract. Like, I just feel so horrible for doing that. Wow. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. I'm not, a, I'm not a guy to leave any sporting event early. That's not my, that has never been, at first I'm like, well, I paid for it. I'm going to stay. Like, I'm getting my, I'm getting my money's worth. And you never know. You absolutely never know. I've like, I, during the 2013 wild card game, I was crying to go home. And then my dad was like, no, we're staying. Cause you're going to either watch them come back or you're going to learn to sit with them and lose. And from that point on, I've always been scarred. Um, yeah, Let me well, most, what most games I've ever left early have have come back to bite me. The the worst was the Patriots were playing the Dolphins on Monday night in 04, and the Pats were on their way to a second straight Super Bowl. And I just I was just so deflated, no pun intended, because they they went up by 11 with four minutes left on the two and two and 11 Dolphins. And sure enough, as soon as my friend and I left the stadium, the Brady was picked off a couple times. The Dolphins scored two touchdowns, came back. It was one of the still one of the bigger upsets in Monday night history. And I missed it because I got frustrated that the Pats were just having their way and the fans were being obnoxious on a cold night in Miami. So it was like that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Stick it out, man. You you're at the Super Bowl yeah. for crying out loud. It was only ten to three at half. I, I don't know what fan was expecting. I mean, I, I, if anything, I, if it was the 21, eight to three game, I could have seen, all right, well, maybe you leave that, but 10 to three at halftime. Come on. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, that's why. Yes, um, the team. <laughs> and then uh, the uniforms, we got to talk about the uniforms. These things are first off Michael Rubin going into the public, you know, re- releasing a statement saying, I don't know why people are getting on us. Like, uh, we're just doing what we were asked. And you know what? I'm going to defend Michael Rubin. Yes, you are right. Nike approved those uniforms. Those are all Nike's fault and Major League Baseball. They approved the cheap, horrible uniforms. But Fanatics makes, they first off, they have almost like a borderline monopoly on the sports merchandise market. Second off, they will make some of the worst merchandise I've ever seen. I mean, just look up fanatics, like product quality, and you'll just see the most negative things. Everyone's hating on them. Everyone hates them. Their hockey jerseys are especially pretty bad. But like, if you look at the Mariners have a patch on their shoulder or like on the, you know, on the sleeve, and it's just a Seattle Mariners patch. And before it was an embroidered patch. Everything was embroidered, very high quality. Now it's just like a screen printed patch. They're just like, yeah, we're just we're mailing this shit in at this point. Um, and they tried to defend it, saying, "Oh, well, last year they wore them at the All Star game, and like Mike Trout and these guys loved it." I'm sure there was a there was plenty of money coming out of their pockets when they were saying that they loved it. Um, these uniforms are just disgusting. And then the ones they're selling to the fans for like 150 bucks, I would rather go to DHK. Which anyone, if you want to buy cheap jerseys, go to DHK or Alibaba. You can order them from China. They're fantastic. They're higher quality than anything you'll get from Fanatics. I'm a Fanatics hater, 100%. All everyone at this, you know, at Chaotically Intolerant hates Fanatics. Um, they are just. I don't understand. I don't understand how they let this happen. How do you let this happen? I have no idea. All I know is that Fanatics' <laughs> best move recently was that their sports. I, I don't know. Was, was that as bad as like the jersey patches? The Yankees guys that won't put the. Uh, Jersey patches on the the insurance, right? Who's the guy? We're Don. He covered it up. Yeah. Um, uniforms. They should just go back to throwbacks. They should just wear throwbacks all the time, or as much as they wear the regular jerseys. That would solve. They need to. Well, majestic. The problem is majestic got 
like they went out of business and then bought out in 2017. And Majestic made fantastic jerseys, like super high quality, great. I still have a Red Sox Majestic jersey. Like they're just gorgeous jersey. And it was like the Nike Cool Base one. So it's high quality. And Nike did make some of the product. But like when you look at, um, like when you see like the old jerseys, like the, you know, Ted, like a Ted Williams, like Mitchell and Ness jersey, those things, that's what they should be wearing on the field. And maybe like the material not might not be the most breathable, but something to that level. Like why is Mitchell and Ness making better product than the players, than what the players are wearing? Right. And yeah, we'll I, I know Nike has, Nike's ruined the NBA. They ruined the NBA jerseys. They make those ugly city connect uniforms. Like the Boston Celtics, don't need change. The Boston Celtics jersey is like perfect as it is. It's simple. It's, you know, the green and white is perfect. And they have these ugly like gold and but whatever. I don't know what the hell they're doing. And the, the only one is like the Miami Heat one. That's okay. The Miami Vice is pretty, I would say pretty good. That, that style always hits with, with teams from Miami. But just, I, I just love hating on fanatics. They are the worst, absolute worst. Hey, yeah. Um, all right. Well, I think we're going to wrap up there. It was a great episode. Next week, we have a big guest lining up. I'm still not, I think I'm going to announce it on the Monday episode. Um, so listen to Monday's episode. Uh, but we do have a big football guest. We're going to come on, talk combine, different players. I'm really curious to hear what he thinks about um, Daniel Jones. If you heard anything about Daniel Jones, because reports, <coughs> reports coming out. That the Giants are done with Daniel Jones completely. So I'm curious what he thinks, um, but we will be bringing him on. And uh, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, the whole thing. And we will see you next week.